Good afternoon, everyone. I want to welcome everyone and thank you uh, for attending this great celebration that we're going to talk about today. I really appreciate everyone being here. My name is Chris Reichert. I am the CEO of Stiefel Bank and Trust, and I'm also privileged to be the chairman of the Contractor Loan Fund, something we'll talk a lot about today. We are so delighted to have so many of you here. It's a great day for the St. Louis region, and in particular, it's a great day for the construction industry within this region. We're very excited to announce today what we believe is going to be a game changer for the construction business and in particular many minority and women-owned construction contractors in the, in the region. These contractors have, over time, had a lot of challenges getting access to capital in order to grow their business and to bid on increasingly larger projects that are involved in some of the major development projects that we're starting to see across our region. I will say for a moment, it is a great place sitting here in the middle of Cortex. As everyone drove here, you, you saw the majority of the cranes in the entire region. You have to travel a long way across the Midwest to see this many cranes, this much going on in this particular part of our great city. Contractor Loan Fund is designed to break down the barriers associated with minority and women-owned construction contractors getting access to capital. It is going to make it possible, it's, it, it would not have been possible to create the Contractor Loan Fund if not for the two full years of very hard work by many area public and private uh, organizations and the leaders of those organizations. Many of those folks are behind me here. They're all going to get an opportunity to speak to you. And then throughout the audience, there are several people representing those organizations that have put together this hard work. And I'm delighted to be able to speak on behalf of many of them. So when we originally set out to build this contractor loan fund, we set a goal. We set a goal of $5 million. If we could achieve $5 million in funding for this initiative, we might be able to make a difference. Well, I'm happy to announce today that we doubled that goal. We've raised over $10 million. And I want to give start a round of applause for those of you that got us going. So contributing to that amount, are over 30 organizations in this community and all of them are listed in these banners and it's small writing for folks that aren't very close but I'd really like an everyone to take an opportunity to look through here because when you see the number and the breadth of organizations that have participated in this initiative it's re really going to make an impact on you that this many people were able to get together with one common initiative these organizations represent the local banks, they represent uh, local universities, owner developers of all of the major projects in the area, major general contractors, community organizations, contractors throughout our, or throughout our, our region. Also shown are many of the community organizations that helped build this loan fund and represented the minority and women-owned con construction construction contractors, as well as many volunteer organizations that are going to be part of making this successful. The way they're going to make this successful is that rather than this just being a loan fund, rather than this just being a pot of ten and a half million dollars of, of capital for a very good cause, there are going to be many organizations providing technical assistance in the form of legal and accounting and bonding and human resources and bidding and various other initiatives, assistance that is going to be provided to some of the construction contractors that are borrowers of this fund. And so those organizations deserve a round of applause as well. So for the avoidance of doubt, the objective, the mission of the Contractor Loan Fund is to increase the number, the size, and the stability of minority and women-owned construction contractors in our region. That is our goal. In addition, our goal is so that they can bid on larger projects, get more involved in these major celebrations of success every time we see these big cranes, but also to enable them 
with the technical assistance and other resources to enable them to build their business to the point of being bankable and, and having access tra to traditional financing for, that other construction contractors have access to. And the goal then is that the $10 million is just a start because it can be recycled and provided to additional other contractors over time. As I said earlier, this is a terrific collaboration of many organizations in this city, and I want to be able to hear from a few of them. One of them is the public sector. While the majority of the financing provided here is provided by the private sector, the public sector was very involved. In particular, St. Louis City found out of our, our initiative within a month of us organizing this group reached out to us and wanted us, wanted to be a big part of it. And since then, Mayor Slay, Otis Williams, Howard Hayes, and many other people in the city rolled up their sleeves and got involved. They've hosted every, thank you. And so I would like to turn it over for a moment to Mayor Francis Slay. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Well, good afternoon, and this is really, uh, a great day for St. Louis and uh, just all the people that are here, the diversity of the individuals and the companies uh, and um, public sector uh, working together to do something really great for our community is something that uh, makes me feel real good as mayor. So I want to thank everybody uh, here and all the organizations you represent uh, to help make this become a reality. I represent, uh, as Chris was saying, uh, the public sector of this collaboration and there's just a few people I'm going to mention by name uh, not give titles and all that because we don't have a whole lot of time I don't want to take a lot of time but we've got Rodney Krim with us and Otis Williams and Howard Hayes and Sable Campbell and Dale Rusatz and Amber Gooding these are individuals and that that I work with in government on a day day in and day out uh, addressing the very issues that we're here to address and building diversity uh, and capacity within the minority and women-owned business community is absolutely essential uh, for us as a region and uh, as a city in particular um, to, to make sure that everyone has an opportunity at success and everyone has an opportunity at the American dream. Uh, more work on public works and subsidized project um, we try, we've been trying to do uh, by, to, to, to try to get more city residents, minorities, and women involved good paying jobs, strengthening, strengthen families, reduce poverty and social problems like crime, and they help make our neighborhoods better. Um, the more we can support our local residents and offer opportunities for a better future, the more we will grow and prosper together. Our contractor loan fund will help, and it'll help in a big way. And looking at the organizations that are here, I was telling somebody that, um, you know, will this work? The organizations and the people that represent them are known for making th good things happening and making things work. So I have every confidence in the world that it would work. Uh, and this fund could not have come, in, come at a better time. In the next decade, we anticipate more than $10 billion in construction, pro construction projects to come online. It is important that we go beyond the typical lending practices to support minorities and women-owned businesses. Establishing the contractor contractor loan fund has been a high priority of my office and the people I work with, and I've mentioned some of them. Uh, it's uh, one of the number, it's one of a number of significant steps that we've undertaken over the past several years to, toward build a, building a stronger minority community, uh, contracting community, and women-owned business community in St. Louis. SLDC has uh, entered into a work program agreement with MOCAN in, in which uh, MWBEs will receive training and bonding uh, banking, bidding, and project management from leaders in the construction industry. We moved compliance back to St. Louis Development Corporation, increased staffing, and implemented an online system that streamlines the uh, compliance process and makes staff more efficient and accurate in making sure that general contractors are doing everything possible to meet the city's minority and women-owned participation goals. And I want to thank my team for all your efforts in that regard. And last month, we, re we re released the results of a year-long minority disparity study that will guide us in updating our processes and goals to ensure continued 
and increased participation of minority women-owned businesses on major development projects in the city and those funded by the city of St. Louis. The contractor loan fund is just another step in the right direction. During this past year, we've worked with public and private sector leaders to raise over $10 million and uh, to help MWBE contractors and be competitive and to grow their businesses. We did, throw, we did this through community and we did it with the generosity and support of so many business leaders that are represented here today. There are nearly 30 major partners in the fund itself, in particular, the working group led by Chris Reichert and Otis Williams that helped us get the program off the ground. We have a lot of people to thank, uh, and I, we thanked some already, but uh, it's so important. So let me just give a big thank you to, to some, of, some of the people that are, that are here and represented. I'm, I know I'm just mentioning some, but uh, I want to mention Stiefel, SM Wilson, BJC Healthcare, Cortex, uh, Washington University, the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, Regional Growth Capital, Twain Financial, the NAACP, Regional Union Construction Center, MOCAN, SLDC and the St. Louis Economic Development Partnership, as well as banks, lenders, and other organizations that share our commitment to diversity and inclusion by participating in this initiative. Your support means that minority and women-owned businesses have a chance to grow and thrive in our community, that you recognize the importance and value of diversity and inclusion to create a better St. Louis for everyone. And that's what makes this all very exciting to me. Like many of our major initiatives and projects in the city, it has taken the public and private partnerships to make them happen. And I want to thank you for your continued commitment to the city of St. Louis. I'd like to close by restating my commitment to minority and women-owned business inclusion and growth in the city of St. Louis region, and thank the contractor loan fund investors and supporters for, your, for being great St. Louisans. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mayor, Mayor Slay. I very much appreciate it. I also would like to welcome to the podium uh, State Senator Jamila Nasheed. Good afternoon, everyone, or oh, is it evening yet? I've been working extremely hard uh, today. But let me just uh, thank all of the part. Let's give the uh, Cortex a round of applause for their dedication and their commitment to the city of St. Louis. And I would be remiss if I didn't thank all of the partners who stepped up to the plate and made this a reality. Let's give them all a round of applause. I can tell you, and I'll be real brief, I was a, just a young girl in an old world, only in my 20s, and I uh, was fighting for minority inclusion. And I went to the extent to go lay out on the highway and lay out on the Metrolink expansion to push for more minority inclusion. And I went to jail for that. And I'm proud of that. But I can tell you I'm even more proud today to see the accomplishments that we are making here in the city of St. Louis, both in the public and the private sector, here now as a senator. So again, I would like to thank each and every one of you for your dedication and your commitment to minority inclusion and women-owned businesses. And we have a long way to go, but we're going to get there together. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Senator Nasheed. That uh, it's delightful to have you here today. Appreciate I'm that. Not, I'm not going to jail for, <laughs> <laughs> for sure. So, next on the docket, I would like to uh, bring up to the stage the the uh, podium. Um, a very successful minority-owned construction contractor. Floyd Sims is president and founder of the Sims Building Group, which is an award-winning construction contractor that's been in business for 12 years. Floyd? Thanks, Chris. Um, I was told to be extremely brief. I don't get as much time as the mayor and, and the other people, so. <laughs> um, you know, having access to capital um, is extremely important for any business, especially a small business. Um, you know, without that, um, it's extremely difficult to sustain and almost impossible to grow a company. Um, so the Contractor Loan Fund, um, what we believe will provide access to inexpensive capital that will, you know, allow companies that already have the talent, they have the personnel, they're qualified to do the work, 
um, but they just don't have access to capital. So being able to um, have access to, uh, for additional bonding, to buy equipment, um, those things, take those obstacles out of the way, would allow business owners to make decisions based on just being a better business, the best business move versus what we don't have access to. So we're excited about it. You know, having access to capital is one thing. Having good partners like Cortex, SM Wilson, Clayco, some of the others uh, that are participating in this program is also going to be key to have access to work as well. So they go hand in hand. So we're excited that uh, the contractor loan fund is open for business. And Chris, you guys can expect my application tomorrow. So I'll be <laughs> <laughs> All Thanks. right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Floyd. And the NAACP, very strong supporter of this overall cause, is led in St. Louis City by Adolphus Pruitt. And Adolphus has been involved in this initiative since the very first day. And I'd like to bring Adolphus up for a few words. Boy, this is a big deal. <laughs> I don't think folks quite get it. You know, it takes money to make money. It's the plain and simple truth in business. Cash flow is like oxygen for a business. Without it, it would die. It would truly die. And that has been the case over the years, well over a couple of decades locally, for a lot of small minority and women-owned contracting businesses. And today, is a great giant step to dealing with the issue that we have long talked about and long had some concern about. The one thing I did want to do though, and I'm glad I see uh, from my good friend, Brother Tengens here, because we, we, we need to recognize that there's a lot of folks invested in this, but some of the folks who really stepped up to the table and involved, and sometime from an advocacy standpoint, we're the first ones to criticize them, and today I'm happy to salute them because the majority contracting community, AGC, stepped up, and they stepped up in a big way, and they deserve a loud round of applause for that. <laughs> you know, I've always been told that leadership is action, and Mayor, the city of St. Louis, you, your staff, is action-oriented. And without the moves, without your input, without you doing the things that you did to push and to make sure this thing came to fruition, it just wouldn't have happened, Mayor. And we owe you for that. And I thank you. You know, in closing, again, when we talk about capital, we cannot leave out the financial community and the owners of the developments. Because both of those two have always, sometime, have been the targets of uh, our criticism. We've uh, criticized owners when we think that goals were not being met. And we've been critical of the financial community. We didn't think they were making loans in the way we desired. And they stepped up to the plate in a significant way and especially my good friends at uh, Stiefel. Chris is going to kill me for this, but Stiefel Bank uh, stepped up in a big way. Chris has sort of led the charge. And we cannot forget the work of Dennis at Cortex, because between Dennis, Chris, and Otis, for now I'm, I'm going to call them the three musketeers. Because <laughs> I'm just telling you, we, we all did a lot of work. But the three of them working in partnership, hitting the, hitting the streets, knocking on doors, making the calls, and doing all the other things to make this group move in a way it's supposed to, was just invaluable. And again, without them, it wouldn't happen. And one last thing we, may, we, we really want to make note of as a region. You know, all across the country, uh, since the death of Mike Brown, there's been all sort of things going on, and people want to solve a lot of problems and looking for solutions. And a lot of times they looked at this region uh, in a way that they, we hope they wouldn't, 
and it had harmed the region's reputation in a number of ways. And I would hope that we can take what is happening here today as a demonstration of how people of different fields, different races, different uh, business models, how they can come together and deal with the problems in the region, and you all deserve a, a well round of applause for that, and I salute you. Thank you very much, uh, Adolphus, and I, I have to say that Adolphus and, and the NAACP was one of many with Minority Business Council, MOCAN, and Hispanic Chamber, and many other organizations being a part of this. This is the definite, that, that is a necessity. It's a critical element of success of an initiative like that, that we all come around a round table and debate the issues that we're talking about and how we can create something uh, this significant. So next I'm going to bring up um, some, a representative from the general contracting community. There were many prime general contractors involved in this initiative and they all made substantial financial investments and they've agreed to participate in a significant amount of work associated with organizing this and, and managing this fund, making loans, et cetera. And so representing that communi community is Scott Wilson, President and CEO of SM Wilson. Jamila and I go way back. <laughs> In fact, it's worth noting, 20 years ago, maybe longer, I might have felt differently about minority inclusion on construction projects. I was just trying to build a business. And Jamila and a couple of her pals showed me a different way to go. And at first it was with anger, lots of anger. But uh, we sorted that out and became very close. No, I love you. Yeah, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> and I love you right back. But uh, I've been uh, with SM Wilson 31 years. I'm their CEO and have seen uh, a lot in construction in the last 31 years. And during that time, I've seen a lot of beneficial changes, things that we all take for granted today, but they involve safety, quality, drug testing, apprenticeship training, scheduling, document control, and numerous computer-based design and implementation changes. We deal with that every day and it's made our businesses better. What's remained relatively unchanged, however, uh, that maybe at least in the last couple of years has changed, has been our industry's approach to greater minority inclusion, both at the subcontractor level as well as at the field level are what we refer to as boots on the ground. I firmly believe that our industry is in the midst of great change relative to diversity and inclusion and the Contractor Loan Fund is another example of this great change. The Contractor Loan Fund is not a government program. It's not a mandate. It's not a pipe dream. It's the real deal. It's an organic program, in a sense, that began naturally more than two years ago when an interested group of public, private, and industry leaders came together and said, what about this idea? And it began to work from there. I'm a part of this group and here saying just a few words about the Contractor Loan Fund because I'm passionate about the kind of profound change I believe the fund represents. And secondly, emerging minority-owned firms that are undercapitalized are one of the most prevalent and pressing issues we discuss in construction almost every day. Access to capital is the name of the game in construction. While the contractor loan fund should not be viewed as a panacea, it should or could have an immediate impact in both stabilizing, growing, and thereby creating a larger pool of minority and women-owned construction companies with immediate benefit for the majority general contracting community. I'm proud to be a part of the leadership group overseeing the Contractor Loan Fund and genuinely look forward to toasting the success of the fund in the years to come. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. I uh, very much appreciate it. So as I said earlier, this is a collection of a lot of different groups of organizations representing different parts of the community. 
The next area are the owner developers. And obviously without uh, owner businesses and institutions and developers wanting to create large scale projects, we wouldn't have the many cranes that I talked about earlier. One of those major, uh, backing up, the, those institutions have participated in this initiative in two ways. They're investors in the contractor loan fund, but potentially more importantly, they're part of the fabric that is developing how we're gonna make loans, how we're going to recommend technical assistance, and how we're going to help these contractors use the money and grow their businesses successfully. And so those institutions are represented today by the uh, uh, Vice Chancellor of uh, Administration at Washington University, Mr. Uh, Hank Weber. Most of us think of Washington University as a teaching, research, and patient care institution, which of course it is. But we also are a huge buyer of construction services. In the past 10 years, Washington University has spent over $1.4 billion on major construction projects, built 25 new buildings, and grown by over 3 million square feet. This, this growth is an essential component of our growing reputation as one of the great research universities of the world and allowed us to add 2,200 new permanent jobs. We now have 13,200 full-time employees, virtually all in the city of St. Louis and the St. Louis region. As the university grows, we depend on a strong region to support that growth and great contractors to help us physically grow. The Contractor Loan Fund offers us a unique opportunity to support the St. Louis region and grow contractors who will work with us in the future. In the 21st century, a strong region means a diverse and equitable region. And the Contractor Loan Fund is one way to achieve growth and equity. We've done well on recent buildings in engaging diverse contractors and a diverse workforce. The Loop Loft student housing project on Del Mar, which I assume all of you have seen, for example, had well over 25% of the total contracts were let to women and minority contractors, and over to about 20% of our employees were women and minority employees. But we want to do more. And our investment in the contractor loan fund, both financial and in terms of technical assistance, will help support the growth of new and larger diverse businesses. We are committed to help small women and minority-owned businesses to gain the size and scale necessary to be sustainable and successful. We are glad to join with so many others in this room in helping make this a reality. Thank you. Thank you, Hank. Uh, I, I really appreciate you speaking and, and for everyone that has, has come up. I, I have to say, we, we haven't touched on, we, we haven't mentioned everybody, but what's important to know is later in this, during the reception, we're going to have another event up at the podium, and Dennis Lauer, CEO of Cortex, is going to lead a, a discussion of, of uh, all of the various other participants. So uh, we'll hold off on, on getting into too much more of that, but um, I want to say a few words. The uh, each of these uh, organizations that have spoken represent the different groups that have come together to, to make this work. What's important is the, the Contractor Loan Fund is a group of individuals representing organizations that are volunteering their time and energy. Again, the investment is one thing, but the time and energy is the most important component of making this successful. There are going to be no paid employees associated with the Contractor Loan Fund. And so I will close talking a little bit before the Q&A uh, that interested minority and women uh, construction companies that are eligible need to be certified by the City of St. Louis um, uh, uh, certification process. They should go to the we our website. We have a live website open for business today, and it's www.clfstl.org. You can pre uh, complete a pre-application form directly online as well as uh, faxing it into uh, our main office. 
Actually, though, we are going to hold two uh, information sessions next week, and one will be on June 2nd. I'm sorry, I'm looking at the dates real fast again. So Tuesday, June 2nd at 8 a.m., and the other one is Wednesday, June 10th at 5 p.m. Both of those information sessions will are similar, and they will provide all of the details associated what, with uh, what construction companies need to do in order to apply for a loan from the contractor loan fund.